Hi, everybody. So in this video, we're going to talk about hemostasis or really even just our clotting cascade, so our coagulation pathway. Now, what this means is that we are simply going to try and stop the loss of blood. So the idea that we are stopping the loss of blood is what we're going to call hemostasis. Hemo, remember, means blood, stasis to stay. All right. Now, we have three primary stages here, and they're all going to kind of overlap a little bit. So we are going to see a little bit of kind of gray area in between kind of which step is occurring. So the first thing that's going to happen whenever we have injured a vessel, so not just the surface of a skin, but we've actually uh, injured a vessel. So even something as small as like a capillary, okay? Or uh, in this case, it'd be like an arterial, okay? So here we have an injury to the vessel. So we've nicked it with a knife. So the blood vessels now hurt. So what we're going to see in this first step is we're actually going to see the blood vessels constrict. So in order to constrict a blood vessel, what do we need to have? Well, we need muscle. Now remember that muscle is actually going to be part of our tunica media for really all of our blood vessels. Now uh, with our image here, you can actually see that the size of the smooth muscle here has actually gotten much larger. Why? Because they are constricting. They're trying to narrow the opening of the blood vessel. Now what does this do? Well, by narrowing the blood vessel, we can actually limit how much blood can pass through it at any given time. Imagine like if you have a wreck on a highway. So if there's a wreck on the road, we don't want people driving into the wreck and adding additional wrecks. So what do we do? Well, what do the police do anyway? They have you move over and have you slide past the accident on the side. So we're constricting the flow of cars through there so that we don't have more cars enter the accident. So that's exactly what we're going to do after the vessels are injured. We're going to do that using this smooth muscle. So we're going to constrict the blood vessel so that we can constrict flow to the injured area so that we have a chance to start uh, limiting some of the blood loss. Now, at this point, we're then going to have a platelet plug form, okay? So remember that we have platelets moving through our blood waiting for this chance and not like they're just kind of waiting, 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 waiting. It's like, oh, there's a cut, cool, I get to go to work. So then they're going to kind of slam themselves to work and they're all going to flood the particular area that was injured. Now, as they start flooding this area, they're going to start to stick to individual collagen fibers that are now exposed. Because remember, we have collagen fibers that are going to form uh, parts of the inner and outer lining of our blood vessels, as well as some connective tissue layers in between our layers of muscle, which means we can actually have, or we have lots of collagen floating around in these areas. And it's actually these collagen fibers that are going to be the attachment sites for the platelets. So the platelets are going to spine themselves or see those open collagen fibers and they're going to stick to them, okay? Now, by doing this between sticking to the collagen fibers and sticking to themselves, we're going to form this big plug of platelets around this area. Now, after this point, we're then going to have what we're going to call the coagulation phase. Now, the coagulation phase is where we're going to convert fibrinogen into or a protein called fibrinogen that is going to be found kind of just in our blood plasma dissolve. Well, we're going to then activate it and turn it into fibrin. So fibrin is going to form these big networks of proteins. So we're going to take all of these protein fibers and now connect them all together. But the best part is that not only we're we connecting the proteins together into these big mesh networks, we're also going to be just grabbing anything and everything that we possibly can and collecting it into that clot as well. So like the platelets are there, well, guess what? You now get to be part of our little fibrin clot. Red blood cells in this area, well, you get to be part of our red fi uh, our fibrin clot as well. Now you can actually see the red blood cells in any clots that you have on the surfaces of your skin. Well, what color does a scab or is a scab? They're black. Well, why is it black? Well, because those are dead red blood cells, okay? So we can actually see some of these red blood cells that also got caught up in this clot in our coagulation phase. So that's kind of our general overview. So now let's go ahead and take a look a little bit more deeply so that we can kind of see exactly what's happening here. So as I said before, our vascular spasm is there to kind of constrict flow to the area so that we can limit the amount of blood flow that is gonna be passing through them. So we can limit the amount of blood loss that can be go through the injury because as long as the wound is open, blood can leave it. Now, this spasm can last anywhere from a few minutes to uh, several minutes, just kind of depending on how bad the cut is. Now, importantly here, our platelets, when they start to bind to those collagen fibers, they're going to start to say, hey, 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 there's a cut. Hey, 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 there's a cut. So they're going to send out a bunch of signaling molecules, these chemicals that are going to tell these muscle fibers around them to constrict even further so that you don't close off one lane of the highway, you close off three or four. So we can just get it as narrow as we possibly can. So we're not just kind of 
squirting excess blood out there. But as I mentioned before too, the greater uh, the vessel damage, the more vasoconstriction we're going to need. So this still fits with that kind of traffic analogy. The bigger the wreck, the more lanes that we need to close. Now, ordinarily, we don't want our platelets sticking to things. If our platelets start sticking to things, that means we're gonna start forming clots uh, in places we don't need to have clots. And that's a good way to have heart attacks and strokes and fun things like that. So we don't want to do that. Okay, so ordinarily we have a protein called prostacyclin uh, that is going to help us repel platelets from sticking to the edges of our blood vessels so that we don't have clots just kind of sitting places where they don't need to be. However, it is the exposure of those extra collagen fibers in those connective tissue layers of the blood vessel which are going to allow those platelets to stick, okay? Now, uh, one of the other things that allows these platelets to stick is a special blood clotting factor called the von Willebrand's factor. Okay, so von Willebrand's factor is one of the several different factors in our clotting cascade uh, that can allow the platelets to stick to collagen. Now, von Willebrand's factor is oftentimes given to patients that have a mutation which allow or makes them have a lack of von Willebrand's factor. So this actually makes their blood a little bit stickier, uh, so their blood or their clotting time is able to drop by a lot. Now, once we move to the next stage where we have platelet activation, this is where these platelets are going to start to release uh, our chemicals, okay? So there are some granules uh, on the inside of our platelets. We're gonna start to basically get rid of those and they're just gonna release their contents to the outside. Now, what this is gonna do, this is gonna be things like serotonin from boxing, which basically say, hey, that little bit of contraction that we had, we closed off a lane, tell you what, we really need to close off two or three just to make sure that we're not hitting the good guys that are trying to take care of the accident. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to close off the blood vessels even more. So these are gonna be more coagulant chemicals essentially, okay? Now, one of these, chem or these chemicals are also telling the other cells around the blood vessel to continue growing. Say, hey, uh, you need to grow faster. Basically saying, hey, you're kind of behind. We've been wounded. We don't just need you to repair old cells. Now we need you to, or replace old cells. Now we need you to repair an injury. So you need to grow more quickly. So they uh, trigger additional mitosis, okay? Now, if you have really, really low platelet counts though, this process is slowed down a lot. Uh, so your blood doesn't clot very well at all. Uh, one of the, or an important test in a lot of cases for pe uh, particular patients is actually going to be a coagulation time test. So how quickly can your blood coagulate? Uh, basically it says, how quickly can your platelets and stuff form your fibrin here? Now, lastly, we have that kind of coagulation state. This is where we're going to convert fibrinogen into fibrin, okay? Fibrinogen is soluble. It's just kind of floating around. It's just kind of these precursor molecules. However, one of, when the platelets recognize some collagen that they can bind to, they release those granules. Some of those granule contents are going to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. When it converts into fibrin, we're gonna get these big, long fibers that are gonna interact in these huge networks and just catch anything and everything they can inside them. So you're gonna see platelets caught up in here, erythrocytes caught up in here, but all of this is to say, hey, we're going to build this big network of walls so that additional red blood cells cannot pass through them. So this is basically going to be the roadblock that says, hey, do not use this particular exit. We are using it for something right now, or we're just closing off this part of the road, okay? Uh, so that's essentially what's happening here with our fibrin. We're going to go from fibrinogen into fibrin, into this big mesh that we can use to trap everything to form our clot. Now, in order for all this process to occur, we need lots of things. Uh, we need our clotting factors, we need our platelets, we need vitamin K in particular, and we need calcium, okay? Uh, when I say clotting factors, we have a lot, uh, and they're actually going to be named in their order of discovery, not necessarily named or numbered in relation to where they are in the cascade. Uh, so that can actually make this a little bit more, a little bit cumbersome anyway. However, most of these clotting factors are going to be produced in our liver. Not all, but most. And notice here that we are dealing with vitamin K. So vitamin K is fat soluble. So we have to have uh, vitamin K being kind of moved through the blood using kind of a not a precursor molecule, but a helper molecule, making sure it can stay and move through the blood fine, okay? Now, we are gonna have two different pathways here for dealing with a, an injury. A and that's going to depend on where the injury occurs or basically where we're actually trying to heal the injury or stop the blood loss. Because whenever you get cut, 
in order for us to cut a blood vessel, we also have to cut through tissue above the blood vessel. Okay, so we're gonna have different clotting pathways uh, in these two different places. So in our blood vessel themselves, we're going to call this the intrinsic pathway, intrinsic meaning inside. Uh, extrinsic pathway is going to be initiated by damage to the tissues outside of the vessel. So say you cut a blood vessel in your arm, well, the skin of your arm also needs to be repaired. So that's that cascade is going to be our extrinsic pathway. Our intrinsic pathway is going to be actually repair of the blood vessel themselves. Okay. Now we can see here that we have, we're going to go from factor 12 to 11 to nine. And then we have some calcium platelet factors in here that are going to go down to our factor eight. All of this is going to be in repairing our blood vessels. But one fun thing is after these first few steps, we enter what's known as our common pathway, okay? So the common pathway is going to be used to basically repair the rest of the places, okay? So this is where we're going to get prothrombin and things like that. This basically start to mess with our uh, platelets here. Essentially what we're trying to do though is now that we have the clot formed, what we're gonna do is we're basically trying to tell the clots to repair the tissues around them. And eventually as the clot needs to go away, we're gonna kind of start squeezing uh, all the fluid and things out of the platelets, out of any blood vessels, basically squeezing everything out of there that is not the new repaired tissue. So eventually the new repaired tissue can kind of grow and fill that space. So that is kind of a general overview of the process of coagulation. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please, please, please just let me know. Thanks, bye.